friends today we are going to discuss about hypochondriasis also known as illness anxiety disorder i am dr suresh badanmat professor of psychiatry working at nimans bangalore in this video i'll be discussing about hypochondriasis what are the signs and symptoms prevalence comorbidity assessment treatment and course and outcome of hypochondriasis hypochondriasis is also known as illness anxiety disorder also called as health anxiety disorder the person who is suffering from hypochondriasis is also called as hypochondriac because of various reason this word hypochondriasis has been stigmatized people consider it as a derogatory term hence the recent classificatory system do not use this word hypochondriasis let's understand how this word got evolved hypochondriasis is a greek word it has two words hypo and chondriac hypo means below chondria means cartilage that is below the cartilage that is below the thorax either it can be referred to the cardiac or to the gut similarly robert burton describes hypochondriasis as a disorder ranging from too much spittle to the rumbling in the guts that means invariably it referred to something related to the gut extreme form of depression associated with hypochondriacal delusions were considered as cotard syndrome also however over a period of time this hypochondriasis was refined into fear of having illness that was secondary to abnormal interpretation of bodily symptoms or signs later it was slowly placed under somatization disorder and it was considered as a part of spectrum of health related anxiety however one need to understand the preoccupation of having a deadly illness continued to present in spite of doctor reassurance multiple investigations and medical examination although the patient may feel immediate relief when the doctor speaks to him reassures him and also the investigations are described and the results were in favor of the patients but over a period of time this hypochondriasis definition changed and also the symptom criteria also changed there has been considerable controversy with regard to hypochondriasis initially it was considered under the gut that means related to gi symptoms in 18th century over a period of time now it is considered as a brain related illness now let's understand the hypochondriasis hypochondriasis is a obsessive preoccupation with possibility of having one or more serious progressive life threatening disease please understand my dear friends it is an excessive preoccupation almost equivalent to obsessive in nature with the possibility of having one or more severe illness which are life threatening diseases and this illness is associated with irresistible urge for repeated physical status checking seeking doctor's consultation multiple investigation looking for medical information on the internet or else in the medical textbook let's understand how the hypochondriasis has been divided bersi et al in 1992 divided hypochondriasis as a primary and secondary primary means that is the illness of hypochondriasis that fear of having illness is the primary in origin in secondary it can be divided into three because of psychiatric illness because of medical illness and because of major life stressors let's look into the psychiatric illness if a person with psychotic depression may have delusion like his guts are getting rotten here it can be considered as a cotard syndrome similarly in schizophrenia the patient may have hypochondriacal delusions similarly in delusional disorder a monosymptomatic hypochondriacal delusion may be there further a panic disorder a person who is having panic attacks repeatedly may feel that he is having heart disease which needs to be investigated and treated he may also feel it is a life threatening that means secondary to psychiatric disorder hypochondriasis can be noted next one is because of medical illness if a person has a benign tumor or he is recovering from a cancer there also he may feel that his preoccupation may be more than it is required 
then also secondary hypochondriasis can be considered was described in 1992 with regard to major life stressors. One of the commonest is medical student syndrome. Here, the medical student when they join first year and second year, whenever they read any illness, they feel that they also have these symptoms. But however, over a period of they start going to the clinical work, they realize they do not have this. But however, the preoccupation is real. Similarly, whenever a loved one dies because of certain illness, maybe sudden cardiac death, because of massive myocardial infarction, the people around them feel that they may also get myocardial infarction. That is, again, grief-related illness or during the caring of terminally ill patient, they may also feel that they may get this illness or they may get this cancer or any other illness. Hence, there also you may feel this hypochondriacal symptoms. But you need to understand, that is, one is because of primary, another one is secondary. But however, at this point of time, in the DSM-5 and in ICD-11, we do not have this primary or secondary. But however, to make a diagnosis of hypochondriasis or illness-related anxiety, secondary causes are not entertained. Let's understand how this health and illness belief spectrum is present. If you understand this concept of this illness spectrum, it will be easy to, easy to understand the hypochondriasis. If you take hypochondriasis on a spectrum scale, on one hand is a person who is healthy, who is conscious about his health, does regular exercise and is highly functional. But however, suppose he becomes health concerned, he will be preoccupied with how much calories he is intaking, how much weight he has to do, how much exercise he has to do. If he does not do exercise, he will become very, very anxious or else many a time after having food, he needs to do more exercise. That kind of excessive health concern can be noted and many a time they will be looking for literature. Next one is health obsessed. This is the person who will be uh, maybe doing consultations many times with the doctor. Even with the minor symptoms, they will go for reassurance. But however, here the person with health obsessed needs to be clearly understood that he may be functional and sometimes very here and there they may have some amount of decompensation but they get back to work at the earliest. Here they are more focused on their health related behavior. It is nothing to do with illness getting. So these three which I am discussing health conscious, health concerned and health obsessed, they are in the domain of being healthy. They do not have anything concerned telling that they have got a deadly illness. But however, once they cross this health obsessed, they start moving into illness anxiety disorder. That means they are having a severe illness. That is where hypochondriasis starts picking up. From there to delusional disorder or psychotic hypochondriacal delusions will come. So here this is how the movement you can see. One end of the spectrum is health related and the other end of the spectrum is illness related. That means they have got a serious illness or else a delusion with regard to having an illness. So you need to understand from the neurotic to psychotic spectrum if you look at this from the impairment should be there with regard to occupational function, academic, job, social function and biological function. So this is the concept you need to understand with regard to hypochondriasis. Further, if you look at the illness spectrum that is illness belief spectrum that is on the other end what we discussed that can be further divided. It can be further divided into reality testing whether the person is whether there is reality is there or not or else he is a psychotic that means he is not in touch with reality and at the lower end you can see symptom severity that is from low to extreme on the other end i said reality testing good to poor that means insight is present and absent if you look at in the middle you can see there health anxiety is there moves into hypochondriacal concern somatization disorder, hypochondriasis, body dysmorphophobia and hypochondrial, hypochondriacal psychosis. That means it is a spectrum. You cannot say just a person has illness related anxiety, maybe health concern, health obsessed, somatization disorder. So it is a spectrum you need to understand. It is not just a categorical definition it is there or not. 
Moving further, you need to understand the extreme of having symptoms and also the insight is very essential. If a person knows that he is extremely worried about his illness, having an illness gives that he has an insight. It is easy to work with regard to psychotherapy. Now let's understand ICD-11 classificatory system, how this hypochondriasis or illness related anxiety has been defined and diagnosed. ICD-11 hypochondriasis clearly says it is a persistent preoccupation or fear about the possibility of having one or more serious or progressive life-threatening illness. You need to understand this. The preoccupation is accompanied by either repetitive excessive health related behaviors or else maladaptive avoidance behavior. What does it mean? Repetitive excessive health related behaviors means he will go to the doctor repeatedly that is doctor shopping is there asking for inf investigation and he again feels that investigation is not done properly and again he wants to go for an another doctor another specialist that means excessive doctor shopping is there maladaptive avoidance is here the patient is extremely worried if he goes to a doctor he will be diagnosed with severe life threatening disease hence he will avoid at any circumstances to go to the doctor so one is excessive help seeking another one is excessive avoidance but however the ICD-11 gives importance to significant distress or significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational and other important areas of functioning has been given importance. But however, there has been a core specifier has been mentioned under hypochondriasis in ICD-11 that is fair to good insight and poor to absent insight has been mentioned. But you need to understand under this hypochondriasis it clearly indicates that these symptoms are classically present because of catastrophic misinterpretation of bodily signs or symptoms and these patients will be hyper vigilant about having any bodily sensation or symptoms even a minor sensation in the body they feel that they have a life-threatening cancer or a life-threatening infection so and that catastrophic misinterpretation is the one which gives rise to this illness but however in dsm-5 it has been renamed into illness related behavior and it has been placed under somatic symptom and related disorders whereas in ICD-11 it has been placed under obsessive compulsive disorder and related disorders. Now let's look into DSM-5. It has been placed under somatic symptoms and related disorders. They have been classified into, under somatic symptom disorder, illness anxiety disorder, conversion disorder, factitious disorder, pseudopsychosis and variety of other related disorder. Here, the word hypochondriasis has been abandoned and illness anxiety disorder has been present here. Now, let's look into the diagnostic criteria under DSM-5. Illness anxiety disorder as described under DSM-5, there should be preoccupation having or acquiring a serious illness. Actually, this acquiring a serious illness is slightly difficult to digest because it can be considered as a OCD symptom where the person has a fear of contracting an illness whereas in hypochondriasis it is very clear fear of having an illness now the symptoms are not present or if present only mild in intensity somatic symptoms in hypochondriasis it will be one or two symptoms particular to a specific specific system whereas in somatization it will be multiple symptoms cutting across various other systems like for example the patient has severe symptoms gastrointestinal symptoms cns symptoms dermatological symptoms so various symptoms can be seen whereas in hypochondriasis it will be one or two somatic symptoms specific to one system there is a high level of anxiety about health and individual is less is easily alarmed about the personal health status he becomes anxious whenever there is some symptoms he feels that he is having a dangerous illness. And this preoccupation with regard to health should be more than 6 months. Then only you can diagnose illness anxiety disorder. The individual has again been classified similar to ICD-11. One is excessive help seeking that is considered as excessive health related behavior or else maladaptive avoidance behavior has also been kept. The illness related preoccupation is not better explained by other any other mental disorder like because of psychosis, schizophrenia or severe depression with psychotic symptoms. But however, 
one need to understand about the important components of hypochondriasis. There are four components have been classified. One is by Bursky and Clerman in 1983. They have given four important components. One is physical symptoms disproportionate to demonstrable organic disease. That means a person has severe physical symptoms but cannot be explained by any organic cause. Next one is fear of diseases. That is he is having one or more disease and the conviction that he is sick is high. And next one is preoccupation with one's own body and the persistent and unsatisfactory pursuit of medical care. See these clearly four components having physical symptoms, fear of disease, preoccupation with one's own body illness and unsatisfactory pursuit of investigation and doctor shopping. So these are the four components have been play, uh, been explained by Bersky and Clerman. But however, if you look at closely as illness, anxiety disorder has been placed under four component, cognitive component, affective component, attentional component and behavioral component. Unfortunately, attentional component also subassumes under cognitive component. Let's look into cognitive component. It is preoccupation and misinterpretation of bodily symptoms. Hence, it is considered as uh, the cognitive symptom. Similarly, affective symptom. Here, the person will be very anxious, fearful that he is going to die and he has severe illness. That is the affective component. Hypervigilance about bodily symptoms. Again, it is a cognitive component, but however, we can one more name has been given, attentional component. And finally, either there will be repetitive hospital uh, doctor shopping or investigations done and not getting reassured by those things. One that is help seeking excessively, otherwise complete avoidance. That is the behavioral component. So these are the four components of hypochondriasis you need to understand to diagnose hypochondriasis. Let's look into the signs and symptoms. Though we dis discussed about diagnosis of ICD-11 and DSM-5, let's uh, come out of this uh, diagnostic, uh, category, uh, diagnostic category uh, symptom systems. We will discuss how signs and symptoms are presenting. First and the foremost, the intrusive and distressing nature of the health-related preoccupation. Repeated thoughts about the illness, repeated thoughts is having severe illness, having anxiety. He feels that one or two diseases are there which the doctors cannot diagnose. He feels that fear of having an illness and fear is the predominant picture. He will having panic attacks, sweating, unable to focus on work. He feels that he is going to die in short period. And this will be, these illness will be specific to one or two system. And many a times they will be compulsively checking the bodily symptoms. They will palpate themselves. They will go and check in the mirror. They will go to the doctor and ask for investigation. They will uh, themselves sometimes they do a CT scan or MRI or maybe blood test. In spite of reassurance, that reassurance will last longer for not more than 24 hours. And again, they feel that they have an illness. And repeatedly going for the doctor shopping is classical, can be seen in hypochondriasis. And they feel there is a something wrong with them and their system is going wrong and the doctor is unable to understand. Many a time these patients go to that level, they feel that their illness is the first of its kind and nobody can diagnose and none of the investigations are, av are available to diagnose and the doctor will come to know about this illness only after once he dies. To that level, the explanation can be seen. The person becomes very sensitive to minor changes in physical symptoms and if there is any physical sensation occurs, he feels that he is having a dreadful illness. He will misinterpret sweating, heart rate, uh, palpitation and uh, fatigue. All those symptoms he will be misinterpreting. Even if they feel depressed, they feel that they are having because of a severe illness. Usually they will refuse to take medication. If you give medication for either anxiety symptoms, depression, hypochondriasis, they refuse medication because they feel they do not have any uh, mental illness. They feel that they have life-threatening physical illness. And even if you do a good amount of reassurance, they have this temporary relief, maybe not more than 24 to 48 hours. And again, having an illness recurs very fast. And they start checking for uh, internet uh, literature with regard to their suspected illness. And they stay on online for many hours. Many a time they go and buy books, medical literature, 
they start reading those medical literature they will go and seek help from the doctor they will confront the doctor's educational status his knowledge and they they feel that they know better than the doctor and these hypochondriasis male and female patients are equally affected it is nothing to do with that male are more predominant or female are more predominant here in hypochondriasis both are equally affected if the person search searches online for many hours that is also considered as cyberchondria which is a, a again a illness of its own which is arising because of lot of literature with regard to health is coming and covid has played a major role in this development of cyberchondria and uh, in not more than in another few years two or three years or five years down the line this hypochondriasis can be presented as cyberchondria the onset is usually around the second to third decade that is between young adult onset to the late adulthood it will be there and not being investigated for a serious illness is the one which is a classical pathognomonic symptom of hypochondriasis now with understanding about this what is the prevalence the prevalence of hypochondriasis is 4 to 6% in general medical patient that means if you go to a general hospital like a district hospital or a medical college and if you look into the uh, if you survey them you will see 4 to 6% of them have hypochondriasis and many studies have looked into this they found that some studies have gone up to 15% of the patient visiting these hospitals have hypochondriasis further hypochondriasis has also been noted in 3% of the medical students and after 2 to 3 years down the line when they go to clinical area it will decrease further but prevalence is 4 to 6% a study done in australia national survey found that lifetime prevalence is 5.7% that means 6% of the population has hypochondriasis in their lifetime but cross sectionally it is around 3% that means in any given point of time hypochondriasis is 3% it's a huge number that means this has a severe impact on various uh, part of our society or it may be even to the family let's look into the burden of care of providing to the hypochondriasis or a illness anxiety patients first and the foremost hypochondriasis has a profoundly negative effect on health of the quality of life of the patient that person will feel that they are suffering from severe illness think about if you have been diagnosed as cancer how is your quality of life the hypochondriasis also will have that severe poor quality of life although they do not have that cancer illness because of the belief or faith that they have that illness their quality of life will be very poor and they also burden with unnecessary diagnosis go and asking for blood investigation radio imaging doctor shopping and also because of this doctor shopping many doctors will challenge them patient will challenge poor doctor patient relationship patient starts giving complaint against doctor and the litig uh, these litigiousness also will add for the poor quality of life and studies have clearly said that this illness anxiety disorders or hypochondriasis use health facilities 30% more than the general population not only that health insurance cost is also escalating because of these patients 20 to 30% and many a time the rejection in insurance occurs because these patients would have gone for see prophylactic investigations which the insurance company will not pay and that also will add to the burden on the patients the cost of hypochondriasis have been estimated to reach somewhere around 56 million pounds per year in uk that is a very old study done in somewhere around 1996 but however now it is going to increase further along with this hypochondriasis think about their occupational loss educational productivity loss job loss family life quality of life uh, decreased so all these things will lead to a poor outcome invariably in patients with hypochondriasis not only that overuse of disability benefits have been also been noted in hypochondriasis if we don't address this illness that is early identification and treatment is essential further we need to understand hypochondriasis goes unrecognized for years because they they have a repeated changing the doctor they go to, from one doctor to another doctor 
they don't believe the doctors. Many a time, they go from one investigation lab to another investigation lab seeking for higher investigations. And also, they become a high burden on the available meager resources and burdening the health system. Even if it is recognized by physician, physician do not want to refer them to psychiatrist because they are scared patient may become angry and litigious. Many a time, the patient with hypochondriasis will challenge the healthcare provider telling that he does not or the doctor does not know the latest cutting edge technology or the latest illnesses. And many a time, the demand for further investigation, referral to specialization, referral to Apex Institute are common. Fear of missing an occult physical disorder or patient may sue is one of the thinking of the doctor. Hence, the many of the doctor will practice defensive practice. That means, why should I get entangled with the patient? Patient is asking for investigation. Let me write as many investigation possible. If the patient is asking for referral for higher institution, let me give referral. Hence, many of our physicians do not engage them in proper therapy. Even if it is communicated to the patient that they have hypochondriasis or illness anxiety disorder, patient will refuse to accept it. They refuse to engage those doctors. And many a time, they refuse to take medication thinking that psychiatric medication will worsen their illness further. Hence, majority of the hypochondriasis remains undiagnosed, untreated, many a time wrongly treated. Hence, my dear friends, Hypochondriasis has unfavorable prognostic factor if they are untreated or undiagnosed early. The good prognostic factor is early diagnosis and early treatment. Let's look into the what are the causes or etiology of hypochondriasis. Exact cause is not known at this point of time, my dear friends. But however, the studies indicate some of the circumstantial evidences with regard to studies say that childhood abuse, or childhood medical illnesses, family history of father or mother having health anxiety can also trigger because of the social circumstances or role modeling. Extreme stress can precipitate this hypochondriasis. Sudden death of a loved ones with certain disease may also provoke hypochondriasis. For example, if mother dies because of myocardial infarction, then the son will also feel that he may die because of myocardial infarction. If even if he has a slight chest pain, he thinks he is going to have a MI. That kind of sudden death of a loved ones can also trigger hypochondriasis. Organic insult to the brain, especially in the geriatric population. If they develop hypochondriasis, it is very difficult to treat. And many a time they are treatment resistant. Secondary causes of hypochondriasis like psychosis, Severe depression with psychotic symptoms with hypochondriacal delusions, anxiety disorder with hypochondriacal or illness related anxieties are common. But however, at this point of time, we do not know the etiology of hypochondriasis. Let's look into the comorbidity. Hypochondriasis illness does not come alone. It will come with the gang of other psychiatric illness. What are those gang? If you look at the studies, studies have clearly said that 70 to 80 percent of hypochondriasis disorder have one more other psychiatric diagnosis and 20 to 30 percent have diagnosable personality disorder that means 70 to 80 percent access one disorder 20 to 30 percent access two disorder are seen that is the comorbidity that means comorbidity is the rule in hypochondriasis my dear friends Whenever you see hypochondriasis, look for comorbidity. What are those comorbidity? Depression is 30%, dysthymia 45%, any anxiety disorder like panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder is 50%, somatization disorder is 20%, obsessive compulsive disorder is 5%, substance misuse, maybe alcohol or drugs is 4%, personality disorder is 20%, Attempted suicide or completed suicide is the literature is slowly mounting up with regard to hypochondriasis. Let's look into the differential diagnosis of hypochondriasis. First and the foremost is transient hypochondriacal response to external stress. 
For example, someone known to the person dies with an heart disease. That person who is a family member also feels that he is going to have a cardiac illness. That is transient hypochondriacal response or you may call it as a grief response. Those are common. But however, to rule out from hypochondriasis, it should be there more than 6 months. Then only you can call it as hypochondriasis. If it is less than 6 months, it is a transient hypochondriacal response. Second differential diagnosis, somatization disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, delusional disorder, psychotic depression, schizophrenia or undiagnosed physical disorder. Let's differentiate between some of these. How to differentiate between somatization versus hypochondriasis? Somatization is symptom focused. Here the patient is worried about multiple symptoms and these multiple symptoms cuts across multiple system that he will have headache, backache, abdominal pain, indigestion, fat related or maybe flatulence, gas problem, unusual symptoms, multiple symptoms. The patient is worried about those symptoms. Here he is looking for symptom relief. Please help me to get rid of the symptoms. Any amount of reassurance is not going to help them. They say, please get rid of my symptom. Whatever amount of medicine you are giving, that is not helping. In hypochondriasis, it is diagnose focused. That means he says, I have this deadly diagnosis. Please diagnose me. Please look into the investigation. Tell me what is the diagnosis. How much time I have. And invariably, it will be one system involved. Any amount of investigation and reassurance will be temporary. Within few, within few hours or maybe days, he feels that he is having a dreadful illness again. So, somatization is symptom specific, multiple system involved and they are focused on symptom removal. Now, let's differentiate between OCD and hypochondriasis. Here in OCD, it is fear of contracting an illness. In hypochondriasis, fear of having an illness. That is the simple twist you can understand. In OCD, I may contract an illness, hence I will wash, I will check, I will take extra precaution, I will avoid that place because there are many illness related uh, cues I am seeing. So they are all OCD. I will repeat, in OCD, fear of contracting an illness, undoing defense, hence washing, avoiding that place, checking, all those things will be done. Other obsession compulsions will be there and in OCD, these hypochondriacal or somatic concerns will be very secretive. Patient very rarely will discuss. Maximum they would have discussed with the family members and they don't discuss about with others or even with the therapist early. In hypochondriasis, patient will be declarative. He says, I have a serious illness. Please diagnose me. They will be discussing with every person in the family or else maybe whoever the doctors or healthcare professionals, they are available. Here, doctor shopping, investigation, search for literature is common and it is monosymptomatic, maybe one or two system may be involved. Let's differentiate between generalized anxiety disorder and hypochondriasis. Again, in GAD, there is excessive preoccupation or worry about day-to-day -day event. It is nothing to do with illness. It is day-to-day -day events, negative outcome of the day-to-day -day events. Being on edge, unable to relax. That is the classical uh, diagnostic symptoms of GAD. Again, as you know, hypochondriasis said, is fear of having illness, undiagnosed and they are serious deadly illness and doctor shopping and investigations are common. Whereas in GAD, rarely they go to the psychiatrist. They will end up in front of a general physician and they will be diagnosing it as uh, maybe just an anxiety. Let's look into the assessment. What are the assessments available? First and the foremost, you need to know about certain simple three probe questions. What are those probe questions? These probe questions are very essential for general practitioner. Why? Because out of 100 patients who come to general practitioner, invariably 5 to 6 percent of them have illness, anxiety disorder or hypochondriasis. So how to rule out those? These three questions you need to ask. First, have you been worrying a lot about your illness or about your health? 
Do you tend to worry about your health in general? Have you ever felt that problem is more serious than the doctor have found? If it is yes, that means you need to move further to ask for a scale or use a structured instrument. So these three probe questions should be asked for any patients entering into a general hospital. Further, if there is one S response is there, then you need to have a measured response. What do you mean by measured response? You need not say, yes, you have hypochondriasis. You have to respond in a very, empath uh, very empathetic manner. It sounds as though there are that you are worried about your health more. Worrying about your health excessively can make problems more difficult to cope. We can probably help you with worry. Let's look into this. Let's discuss about your issues of health. That should be the measured response. But however, if they have say yes for these three, now you have to use certain scales for hypochondriasis, such as health anxiety inventory scale, 18 item scales are there, Whitley index of hypochondriasis, illness attitude scale, somatoform disorder symptom checklist. These are the scales which can be used. Further, how to do evaluation? First and the foremost, whenever you suspect hypochondriasis, give a detailed evaluation. Spend time with the patient. Focus on the patient's signs and symptoms. Take a thorough history taking. When did the symptom start? When it increases? When it worsens us, what does the what does makes the patient's symptom relief occurs? Get all the past history of doctor's consultation, investigations done. Go through them in front of the patient. Do a thorough general physical examination. Judiciously use the diagnostic studies. Do not buckle under the pressure of patient's demand. Avoid premature reassurance. This you should understand that. Don't say that you don't have any illness. You have only hypochondriasis. Don't do that prematurely. Say that. Let's discuss about your problems and how we can decrease your concerns. Ask for regular visit to a doctor only. If possible, one doctor should engage this patient. Discourage doctor shopping. That is very, very essential to have a good rapport with the patient so that we can understand the patient and engage the patient and make the patient functional. And you have to tell the patient not to discuss about their problems with others, about with the family members, relatives or with other doctors. Discourage doctor shopping. Discourage investigation. Focus on coping rather than curing the symptoms. Gradual introduction of psychological hypothesis need to be introduced. Focusing on ability and functioning should be the part of parcel of psychiatric treatment and please discourage online search for literature with regard to signs and symptoms and you need to understand there is a vicious cycle what the patient goes through whenever there is a stress this leads to anxiety because of anxiety they will have various signs and symptoms they will misinterpret the signs and symptoms and feel they have a dreadful illness and that illness is not been diagnosed. Hence, they will go to the doctor. Doctor will ask for certain investigation. After the investigation is done, the doctor reassures them to some extent. And the patient feels they are all right for few days, maybe one week. Immediately, they will have this again some stress. Anxiety symptoms picks up. And this vicious cycle continues. This vicious cycle need to be broken. That is done by cognitive behavioral therapy. What are those cognitive behavioral therapy means? The cognitive therapy focusing on misinterpretation of bodily symptoms need to be attacked. They would have some cognitive errors, some belief system schemas, which needs to be challenged. At the same time, you need to have exposure therapy, exposure related to certain anxiety situations or a stressful situation where he is going to have these symptoms. And he will misinterpret those, misinterpret those symptoms. Many a time, they will, because of these symptoms, they will start doing compulsive doctor shopping or investigation. You need to ask them to avoid doing those. And so that temporary relief can be stopped, 
and the patient does not get yield for this compulsive doctor shopping and compulsive investigation and he needs to stay with the anxiety and once he is used to anxiety this exposure response prevention along with CBT works well in hypochondriasis. Hence the treatment are one is SSRI antipsychotics if the patient has uh, hypochondriacal delusions reassurance psychoeducation and cognitive behavioral therapy what are the medications which have been used from imipramine amitriptyline clomipramine fluoxetine sertraline pimozide risperidone are the drugs which have been used there are few RCTs some of them are open label trial many of them are case studies available let's look into the meta analysis of treatment one of the meta analysis of treatment comparing cbt versus medication treatment was published in comprehensive psychiatry in 2022 this meta analysis included 13 randomized control trial which included subjects of 1405 so this study of meta analysis of 13 study this is how the study was done which included 12 cognitive behavioral therapy study and 3 SSRI. Look at the numbers. Only 12 RCT with regard to cognitive behavioral therapy, 3 studies with regard to medication. This was published in 2022. That means systematic studies on cognitive behavioral therapy or on medication with regard to hypochondriasis is very minimal. What did this study conclude? The meta-analysis suggested that both CBT and SSRI are moderately effective with regard to acute treatment of hypochondriasis. That means we do not know if the hypochondriasis is chronic, whether these medication and CBT will be helpful is not known. That's what this study said. Preliminary indication that intervention at a younger age group produces better outcome with CBT. That means if you start early, younger patients with CBT works well. But the study clearly said that there is positive of studies, positive of well-conducted RCTs. And further, long-term effect of this treatment we do not know. One need to know the magnitude effect of CBT versus medication is not possible at this meta-analysis because study sample size were very less. Now let's look into the psychotherapy related studies. Cochrane review was done. This Cochrane review with regard to psychotherapies was done in 2007 to know what is the effect of psychotherapy on hypochondriasis. In this Cochrane review, six studies were selected of total 440 participants. But unfortunately, psychotherapy in this hypochondriasis included cognitive therapy, behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, stress management, psychoeducation. All forms of psychotherapy were included except psychoeducation was not included. If they have only psychoeducation, those studies were not included in Cochrane. So Cochrane review clearly said that most of the studies compared with the waiting list and most of them had small sample size. Treatment fidelity was a question. Heterogeneous intervention of psychotherapies made difficult to compare. Uniform structured intervention is not there. Uniform structured assessment scale was not there. So it was difficult to come to a conclusion. Estimation of effect size, comparison between different types of psychotherapy was not possible. That was clearly indicated in this Cochrane review. But however, they said that psychotherapy indicates that hypochondriasis can be treated and moderate effect size is there. Psychotherapies like such as psychoeducation, problem solving, cognitive behavioral therapy, internet based cognitive behavioral therapies are also being tried nowadays and has been found to be effective. Exposure and response prevention, relaxation, stress management, mindfulness, acceptance and commitment therapy, homework tasks are the various psychotherapies has been used. But however, the evidence is mounting towards cognitive behavioral therapy. Let's look into the course and outcome. Hypochondriasis tends to present 
as a mild self-limiting disorder in majority of the cases. In some people, course remains episodic, infrequent, brief symptoms period and often triggered by life stressors. 5% of the cases have a chronic, unremitting, treatment-resistant hypochondriasis. However, for the first line of treatment, 55-60% to 60 of them respond. Who are the people who respond? The people with sudden onset, if there is a stress-related onset, and the age of onset, good insight indicates better prognosis. Late onset, presence of personality disorder, presence of comorbid conditions like psychiatric illnesses, baseline severe psychopathology, severe dysfunction indicates poor prognosis in hypochondriasis. To conclude, my dear friends, illness anxiety disorder, hypochondriasis or health anxiety disorder is common in patients seeking consultation in general hospital. It is around 3-6% to 6 my dear friend. It causes severe burden not only on the patient but also on the family, on the community and also on the available health resources because they are going to use the meager health resources 30 times more than the general public. Early diagnosis and engagement in treatment is the answer for hypochondriasis. There is a need for systematic RCTs with regard to medication and psychotherapy is essential at this point of time. But however, studies are indicating combined combined medical that is psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy is the answer at this point of time for hypochondriasis. And if the patient had severe belief with regard to hypochondriasis, to the level of delusion, antipsychotics can be used. Otherwise, SSRIs are the first line of treatment in hypochondriasis, my dear friends. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.